Hey guys, welcome again to the Mass Club. If you are just joining us, so welcome. Continuing from our previous video on variation, we're going to be looking at right pass questions on variation from 2014 to 2023. Without further ado, let's get started. The first question taken from Reich 2023 states that m varies jointly as the square of n and the square root of g. If m is equal to 24 when n is equal to 2 and g is equal to 4, find m when n is equal to 5 and g is equal to 9. I wanted to pause the video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So we're told that m varies jointly as the square of n and that is multiplying the square root of g. So that's square root of g. So if we wanted to resolve this symbol, I'll have to introduce the constant. In this case, let's make the constant k. k is like the standard. So we could say m is equal to k n squared square root of g so the next thing i want to find is i want to find what k is so we can make k sort of formula and say k is equal to m over n squared square root of g since the multiplication that is joining all of these three guys now we're told that m is equal to 24 when n is equal to 2 and g is equal to 4 so we can be able to find k now so our k will now be equal to 24 all over 2 squared times square root of 4 and that will be 24 times 4 times 2 so 4 times 2 is 8 so this one is 1 and this one is 8 and 24 is 3 so our k is 3 now that we know what our k is we can be able to say that therefore our equation m is equal to 3n squared square root of g remember we said something that the k is always a constant the constant is a value like 3 1 over 2 5 minus 5 so you must always have something like that in our told us that we should find m when n is equal to 5 and g is equal to 9. All we just need to do is just to substitute now. So we know that m would now be equal to 3 times 5 squared times square root of 9. And this will give us 3 times 5 squared is 25. Square root of 9 is 3. So 3 times 25, that will give us 75. And 75 times 3, that will give us 2 to 5. So our m is equal to 2 to 5. Let's see if you are correct. So that would be option D. Great. Second question says that m varies directly as n and inversely as the square of p. If m is equal to 3 when n is equal to 2 and p is equal to 1, find m in terms of n and p. I want you to pause the video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So we're told m varies directly as n and inversely as the square of p. So that would be all over p squared. As we have discussed in the previous video to this so the next thing to do is to remove this alpha and introduce the equality sign so that will be m is equal to and we'll do that by also adding the constant k k n all over p squared so from this we can cross multiply to make n of the formula that will be m p squared is equal to k n and make case of the formula by saying k is equal to m p squared all over n so we're told that m is equal to 3 when n is equal to 2 and p is equal to 1. So let's substitute. So our k will now be equal to 3 times 1 squared all over 2. And that is 3 over 2. So therefore, we can say our m is equal to just substitute the k as 3 over 2. Yes, so that would be 3n all over 2p squared. So that's basically it. That is the formula for our n in terms of n and p as a question so we should do let's see if our answer is correct so that should be option a great number three says that given that r is directly proportional to l and inversely proportional to p r is equal to three when l is equal to nine and p is equal to 0 0.8 find r when l is equal to 15 and p is equal to 1.8 i want you to pause the video and try it out yourself so we said r is directly proportional to l and inversely proportional to r so that will be all over p and i'll change this to an equation by saying r is equal to kl all over p right and next thing to do is to make case of the formula so that will be rp is equal to kl when i cross multiply and if i divide both sides by l our k is equal to rp over l we're told that r is equal to 3 when l is equal to 9 and p is equal to 0 0.8 so let's find what k is so k will be equal to 3 times 0 0.8 all over 9 so 3 here 1 3 here 3 so that will be 0 0.8 divided by 3 which will give you 0 
in three decimal places. Now that we know what our k is, we can now say therefore our r is equal to 0 0.267 times l all over p. So now the question now says that we should find r when l is equal to 15 and p is equal to 1.8. So trying to find r, l is equal to 15 and p is equal to 1.8. We can substitute and find this. That will be R is equal to 0 0.267 times 15 all over 1.8. If you point this on calculator, what will this give you? So this gave me 2.25. So that's basically it about it. Let's see if our answer is correct. Okay, so the nearest value is A. I'm sure the reason why we're having 2.2 .2 is because of that approximation that we did. If we did, uh, I think that's our 0.6667, something like that. Well, if we did that, we would have add A directly great. This question says that given that x is directly proportional to y and inversely proportional to z, x is equal to 15 when y is equal to 10 and z is equal to 4. Find the equation connecting x, y and z. This is from y2020. I want you to pause the video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So we're told that x is directly proportional to y and inversely to z. So we could say this as saying x is equal to ky all over z. So if we cross multiply it, that will give us xz is equal to ky and then our k will be equal to what? xz all over y. So we can find what our k is because it said x is equal to 15 when y is equal to 10 and z is equal to 4. So let's substitute. k is equal to 15 times 4 all over 10. 15 times 4 is 60, so 60 over 10, and this means that our k is equal to 6. So therefore, our x is equal to, wherever we see k, we'll put 6, so that will be 6y all over z. Simple and short. Let's see if we got the answer correct. So that should be option A. Great. Next question is taken from 2019, and it says that h varies directly as p and inversely as the square of y. If h is equal to 1, p is equal to 8 and y is equal to 2. Find h in terms of p and y. I want to pause the video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So just as we are told, h varies directly as p and inverse is that will be all over as the square of y, so that will be y squared. Changes to equality sign, so that will be h is equal to kp all over y squared. So if I cross multiply, that will be h y squared is equal to kp. Dividing both sides by P to make K stand alone, that will give us K is equal to H Y squared all over P. Now that we know this, we know that H is equal to 1 when P is equal to 8 and Y is equal to 2. We just substitute. So that will be K will be equal to 1 times 2 squared all over 8. And that is 4 over 8. And that is equal to 1 over 2. So our k is equal to 1 over 2. Then we can substitute this into this equation here, which is h is equal to kp all over y squared. And say that, therefore, our h is equal to, since it's 1 at the top, that will be p over 2y squared. Simple and short. Let's see if our answer is correct. p over 2y squared. That is option c. Great. Now, my sister came from 2018, and it says that given that y varies inversely as the square of x, if x is equal to 3 when y is equal to 100, Find the equation connecting x and y. I want to pause the video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So we know that y varies inversely as the square of x. So that will be x squared. Changes to equality sign by saying y is equal to k all over x squared. If you cross multiply, k is equal to x squared y or y x squared. Anyone? We're told that x is equal to 3 when y is equal to 100. So let's substitute. So that means our k will now be equal to 3 squared times 100, and that is 9 times 100, and that is 900. So that means our k is equal to 900. So if I substitute here, therefore our y is equal to 900 all over x squared. And if I cross multiply, that will be y x squared is equal to 900. So that is our answer for the equation connecting x and y. Let's see if we're correct. So that will be option B. Great. Question 7 is taken from 27 and says x varies inversely as y. And y varies directly as z. What is the relationship between x and z? I want to support the video and try this out yourself. Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So we're told that x varies inversely as y. And then y varies directly as z. What is the relationship between x and z? So if I say I want to change this to equals, that would be x is equals. Let me use a here. 
so that is a over y ab and let me use b here so that will be y is equal to b z instead of using k k k all the time so i told that yeah y is equal to b z if i say this is my equation one and this is my equation two so i can substitute equation two in equation one so anyway i see y i'll put b z so x is equal to a all over b z so we have this and a is a constant b is a constant a constant divided by a constant is a constant just like we have three if i say three divided by one it's still true three is a constant when i said something in one of the videos that when you have things like three those are constant three will always remain three but when you have something like three x the value is dependent on what the value of x is if x is one that would be three if x is two that would be six so you can see that it changes that one is a variable but when you have three divided by three five divided by one it is always a constant value so a is a constant, B is a constant. A constant divided by a constant is a constant. So I could say A is equal to, I could even say C over Z if I want to, because C is another constant. But what are we saying from here? If you notice that for us to have this type of thing, when we have this kind of relationship, that means that there must be an inverse variation between A and Z, right? Just like here, there was an inverse variation between X and Y. So this should not be A, this should be X. It should be X. So there was a, an inverse relationship between x and y. That was why we had this. Same thing. So there must have been an inverse relationship between x and z for us to have had this. So the relationship between x and z is an inverse relationship. Let's see if we're correct. Great. So x will be inversely proportional to z. And that will be option B. Great. Question 8 is taken from 2015. It says that the cos C of producing n bricks is the sum of a fixed amount h and a variable amount y. Where y varies directly as n. If it costs 950 CDs to produce 600 bricks and 1030 CDs to produce 1000 bricks, find the relationship between C, H and N. Calculate the cost of producing 500 bricks. You can pause the video if you want to, but I'm going to go directly into solving this particular question. So we're told that C is the sum of H plus Y, right? And we're told that Y varies directly as N. So this is like Y is equal to KN. So this is like one equation, this is like another equation, equation 2. Maybe I could substitute equation 2 in 1. Let's see. So substituting equation 2 in 1, we're told that C is equal to H plus KN. So in the first case, we're told that it costs 950 CDs to produce 600 blocks. So this is 950 is equal to, I think the, the H, okay, so this is H plus K times N. Our N is what? 600 right i think the h is a constant value yeah so h is a fixed amount so the h is a constant so h will always remain h so this is 950 is equal to h plus 600 k h is a constant value k is a constant value so there is no issue so in our case two we're told that it costs 1030 cities to produce 1000 bricks so that would be k times 1000 so this is one 1030 is equal to h plus 1000 k right so these are equation 3 and these are equation 4 now so that we find the relationship between c h and n so i could say from equation 4 let me make each of the formula that would be 1030 minus 1000 k which would be our equation 5 so if i substitute equation 5 into the other one i did not touch which is equation 3 so in 3 anyway i see h i replace it with this big value so that will give me 950 is equal to 1030 minus 1000 k plus 600 k so this is 950 minus 1030 is equal to minus 1000 k plus 600 k that will give me minus 400 k and then 950 minus 1030 would give me minus 80 is equal to minus 400k so if I want to make case of the formula I will just divide both sides by minus 400 so minus the cancel minus 1 this is 5 so our k is equal to 1 over 5 right and now we know our k that is equal to 1 over 5 the question is that we should find the relationship between c h and n so we know the k is 1 over 5 for sure so I could just substitute it into this place and say therefore our c is equal to this is h plus 100 1 over 5 n or i could just say c is equal to h plus n over 5 any which way works so that's basically about the c 
it now says that we should calculate the cost of producing 500 bricks oh so we know what k is but we don't know what h is h is another constant so we need to find what the constant h is yeah so what do we know we know that from equation 5 h is equal to 1030 minus 1000 k let's substitute our value for k in equation 5 because we must know all constants so equation 5 is h is equal to 1030 minus 1000 k just to confirm okay and our k is 1 over 5 so that will be 1030 minus 1000 times 1 over 5 and this is 1030 minus 200 and that will give you 830 so our h is equal to 830 so we can now get the full equation of c so therefore c is equal to 830 plus n over 5 fine now the second bit of the question answer is that we should calculate the cost of producing 500 bricks so we know the equation for c and our n is equal to 500 so this is equation 2 so substitution c will be equal to 830 plus 500 all over 5 and that will be equal to 830 plus 100 so the cost of producing 500 bricks is 930 cities simple and short let's see if our answer is correct so that is 830 plus 1 over 5 n and 930 cities always remember to put the currency i did not put it my bad the last question says that if x varies directly as y and y varies inversely as z what is the relationship between x and z i want to take a minute to pause and solve this question Welcome back. Let's solve it together. So we know that x varies directly as y, y varies inversely as z. So I could use a as the constant. So that would be x is equal to a y, and then y is equal. To, I could use b a, b over z. So I will just if I make this on equation one and I make this on equation two, I will say substituting equation two in one. So that would be x is equal to a times b over z. So this will give me x is equal to a b all over z just like i said if a is a constant b is a constant multiplication of two constants and that constant let's say is the constant c so x is equal to c over z for us to have this kind of equation the kind of relationship that will exist between them must be an inverse relationship so x is inversely proportional to z so that's basically it about this particular question let's see if we're correct so x is inversely proportional to z that would be option b great so with this we've come to the end of the work pass questions on variation variation is one of the simplest topics that you can ever see very simple and very direct so if you found this video useful subscribe to our channel like the video if you have any question comments i'll respond and if you know anybody that this channel can actually help please spread the word the more you spread the word the more i'm encouraged to continue pushing forward see you guys in the next video bye for now